He asked us no longer to conform to the patterns of the world. Yet how many things are happening around and about us that are causing us to feel and believe we need to conform to the world. We must conform to the world because the world's demands on us are such. Well, make a choice. Am I going to conform to man and all that man is promising and offering and requiring and commanding? Or should I just obey God? And what is God telling me to do? And get convicted about what God is telling you to do and then walk in that conviction rather than walk in conforming to the patterns of the world. Because he says in, in Proverbs, um, um, obey my teachings and it will go well with you. So, if you want it to go well with you, obey the word of God. But spend time in the word of God. Go to the word of God. See what he's saying to you for your family. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it, or you will be denying the truth. So if you harbor selfish ambition, you are denying the truth. Such wisdom, because the reason why is because such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it is earthly, and it's unspiritual, and it's of the devil. Where are you reading now? I'm reading from James chapter 3, verse 13. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil practice, practices. Yet the world says you must teach your children what is their ambition, what is their career, what are they going to do, how are they going to do it, how are you going to prepare for them, how are they going to be successful. Just go home as a family and do a study on what and look for the word in any concordance and try and find the word successful in the word of God see what successful is about, what God says about what the word successful is, what has been successful in God, from God, not from the world, what does he say in his word about being successful? If God sees a humble servant, good and faithful servant, that is what is good and faithful to God, that humility. When you see, when you see somebody that is not walking in pride, being proudful, so what is successful to God? To see a humble spirit. And a humble servant. That's just one. And so how are we going to teach our children to be successful? We're going to teach them to be humble. Because God can God use a humble servant? And can he use a proud servant? But what is the world teaching us? To build our children up to be proud. Look at me. Look what I've done. Look at all my accolades. Look at my trophies and my certificates. And look at me. And, and parents are actually teaching their children to be proud. It's not what God tells us to teach them. Because, the, because selfish ambition, you will find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven... So now, what kind of wisdom do you want to teach your children? What kind of wisdom do you want? Do you want them to grow up to be wise so that they make good choices? And Well, this is the kind of wisdom that God calls from heaven. This is wisdom from heaven. This is what it looks like. It's first of all pure. Okay, so now we've got a whole lifetime ahead of us of teaching our children about purity. What is purity? Is the world dishing out anything that looks pure to you? Or is it darkness and evil practices and everything that Scripture says just above that? Everywhere Every kind of disorder and evil practice. So teach your children to be pure. Then, peace love. So if there's strife in your home, well... And there's, the, there's a lack of peace, then we're not operating in His wisdom. His wisdom of heaven isn't present in our heart. Considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. So if you want a harvest of righteousness in your home, to see your children or your grandchildren, because their grandparents here today, walking in righteousness, this is what we teach them, how to walk in righteousness, how to have a harvest of righteousness. What parent doesn't want their child to be in right standing with God? Every loving parent would want that for their child. So how do you get your child to be in right standing with God? Making sure that they've conformed to the world? Making sure that they're complying with man's demands on them? Or taking them to the Word and saying, right, let me teach you about walking in righteousness. 
Let me teach you about the wisdom that comes from heaven, that God says is yours. Because it's Christ in you. But going back to success, we were reading on the way up here that Berlin Carruthers, the guy who wrote Prison to Praise, I don't forget which book it was, Walking and Leaving. Walking and Leaving. And then he was talking about when he moved to Southern California, they were now going to build a church. And how God was just bringing people that were equipped to do whatever function was required at, at that particular time. And a guy who was the, the head of the biggest construction company in California at that time, in 1972, his, his one guy didn't get paid. And so he got his whole crew to walk off site, which then caused the next crew to walk off site and a chain reaction that right through his whole company, which then foreclosed, the banks foreclosed on him, and in a month he'd gone from being this ultra successful businessman in the world's view to destitute. And and it's a story within a story. Just how this guy came to know Jesus and how he came to humility and how God then took him and raised him up again, but the success was not for himself or through himself, but it was for God's glory. But it was a whole process that he had to go through. You know, if you read the book, you'll, you'll, you'll see the whole process. And, and that is success in the world's eyes or success in God's eyes.